This conference will now be recorded. Let's play the one. No. I think uh, we are going to uh, variables, I guess, right? Yes. So, uh, variables, and then we go through some rules. So, what things we cannot have within variables, right? That means uh, variables cannot contain special characters, right? So, we have seen that. And then, so we have seen three, uh, three rules that uh, variables cannot contain. So, variables cannot contain uh, a special character. So, except underscore, that's one rule. And the second rule was a variable cannot start with numeric. Okay, that's the second rule. And the third rule was variables are case sensitive. Variables are case sensitive. Okay, now, but what if? So we are seeing defining variables okay, by following these three rules. Now, but so why variables cannot contain some special characters? What is the reason? Because we have some special variables. Okay, these variables are already defined variables. Okay, that's the reason you cannot again define the variables. There are some predefined variables. So when you go through these variables, or when you run these variables, you'll have automatically uh, these uh, variables, some predefined values in them. Right? OS provides some predefined values for them. So what are those? Okay. So now let's look into that now. Special variables, some special characters in variables. And what exactly they are? I guess if you go there. So what do you do that? So we have some special. Uh, see, how do you call a variable? The dollar and the variable name, right? In the same way here. So dollar and the variable name. But what is the variable name? Is star. Dollar ash. What's the variable name ash? So that's the reason you cannot see these variables have some predefined inbuilt meanings. So you cannot use them anywhere. Okay. While you define a variable, you see that dollar zero, dollar one. You see that this is what I said. Why variable cannot start with numerics? Zero, one, two. What is a dollar zero? What is dollar two? What is dollar is the rate? What is dollar the question mark? Okay. We are dollar dollarized. Okay, why we have these ones? Okay, let's understand. Now, so let's first of all. So what is my script? That is my script. Okay. Now run the script. Now then I'll explain it. Okay. One second. So I'm running this script with some so value passing onto the variable okay then so firstly just look at here where is my script there we have script now dollar and then star right so what is the dollar star dollar star gives so that is the value we have 
So given we have assigned to that script at the time of running that script. Okay, but there is a value now. So, but all these values. So we have how many variables? How many different uh, words in it? We have three words. So these three will be these three words will be considered into three different words. Okay, and that is what is dollar star. That is what is dollar star. Dollar star will differentiate that these three are the three different words. Okay, and then next is dollar ash. So what is dollar ash? So how many words we have in that? Okay, how many are there? So there are of course three. Okay, and then next is so dollar zero. Okay, what is dollar zero? So dollar zero will give you. So what is the command we have run now? So what is the command we have run? Uh, this is the command. Uh, this is the script we have run. Now you see that script name. It's a script name. And then next is dollar zero. Now among this, what is my first value? Hello, right? Dollar one means first value, and dollar two means the second value. What is second value? Is good. Yes. And again we have dollar at the rate. Now what is dollar at the rate? Dollar at the rate. So we'll consider all these three into one single value. Whereas dollar star. Consider all of them into three different values. Dollar at the dollar at the rate will consider all the all these three values into one single value. Okay. And then we have dollar question mark. So what is dollar question mark? So dollar question mark will give the status of the script. Okay, will give status of the script. What is the status of the script was success. Now, since it was success, and then the question mark that means what is the value then zero. So if any command or any script you run, and if the value is written as one, that means it is success. If it is written one, it's a failure. So now what is the value? Zero. So this execution was success. And that is dollar question mark. And then we have dollar dollar. So what is the dollar dollar? Dollar double dollar I mean will give the process right? process ID. Right? So what is on which process uh, what was the process ID the script was executed on? So it was executed on so what 78 T4. Okay, fine. Now let's modify the script. Now I'm going to add another special variable. With dollar exclamatory. So, what is the dollar exclamatory does? Dollar ex exclamatory will give us if there are any uh, background processes are running. So, for example, I'm uh, running some processes in the background. Yes, if any process is running in the background, so what is the process ID? See the difference between dollar double dollar plus dollar exclamatory. Double dollar will give us the process ID on which your uh, command has been done or execution was done. Whereas dollar exclamatory so will give us the process ID if there is any process is running in the background. If so, what is that process ID? So let's do one thing. I'm going to restart the service. Service SUTPD restart. Okay. I'm going to restart it. That's fine. But I just mentioned sleep. So sleep with about some, sorry. We mentioned some seconds here. So something about. Let's say, let's say some so hundred seconds, hundred milliseconds. Okay, and then nine. So 
I'm restarting my HTTP service with the help of that command, service HTTP restart. But while I restart it, I want to take that process in the background for about some 100, 100 milliseconds. So, and it will be running in the background as a service for that certain time of period. Okay, so, and then in that case, I'm printing that process ID. So, sleep is nothing but just kind of waiting, you can say. So, it will be waiting for the certain 100 milliseconds. And then, so in that milliseconds, while it's in uh, sleep mode, I just print that process ID using dollar hash. So, dollar exclamatory. Now, save it. Run the script. Yeah, so let's again open it. Think the command was incorrect or what? Once again, let me check that. Oh, that there was a typo. I'm sorry. Just please start. Save it. Now run that system. Now you see that it is stopping, but that's in see that it is not happen quickly. So it's in progress, right? So it's in progress. So now you see that. Yes. So it has taken its time about some hundred milliseconds. And in that I have printed that process ID. So that is what is dollar exclamatory. Okay. So these are some special characters. Okay, let me just open the document. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, not share this. So definitely I will do it after, probably after 10 o'clock. After next session, I will just share all these files. Okay, I'm sorry. I will just do it definitely. Okay. Now, where is it? So there it is. Right? So now we are at this. So it prints last background job. So what is the background job? And dollar dollar reduce the current shell ID. That means what is the command? What is the shell you are using? So we have run the shell script, right? Okay, that script, what is the process idea? And dollar dollar question mark exit status. That means was it success or failure? And dollar at the rate. Each code is string treated as a separate argument. Okay. And whereas dollar dollar star, so it shows the complete position parameters into one single string. Okay. So that is what this where is it? Now, so we have how many strings we have, how many words we have? We have three. So and dollar star will consider all of these three into so what is that three different parameters a complete set sorry it shows set of parameters as a single set single parameter whereas dollar at the rate each string will be considered as a different parameter different argument right and dollar hash set a number of arguments we have provided how many arguments we have provided three okay and then so first argument second argument dollar one dollar two and dollar zero means Name of the executed command. What is that? So I think this is the one anyway. So dollar zero, right? And I have mentioned the dollar zero initially. There it is. So name of the executed command. This is the command we have done. Okay. Now these are the special characters. So that's the reason. So you cannot have the special characters while defining a variable. Okay. Right. So now there is special characters. Now let's move on to so okay, learning something into kind of uh, arithmetic operations. Okay, we'll just look into arithmetic and then 
later we'll also move on to logical okay we'll move on to logical as well relation we'll move on to relation that means comparisons and then after that we'll move on to logical but so let's go with arithmetic i think we all know what is arithmetic okay now so that means adding numbers but you can add numbers but let's move on to arithmetic so what are the main of what are the arithmetic operations we have plus minus okay and what else we have start that means multiplication and then percentage means divide so these are the different arithmetic operations and by following these arithmetic operations we'll perform some we'll write a script and we'll just try to add numbers multiply numbers so just do this okay very simple basic things so as usual let's go with so echo and enter so enter uh, we take just take two numbers okay so enter number a to add one second okay and then then just read that input and into a uh, argument into a variable what's the variable name is let's say a okay and echo enter enter a number enter b number number b to add okay let's say and then read that store that in a variable okay fine now we, we start adding it okay now how to add it as usual just go with echo and then let's say we add these two using dollar okay and in double braces and let's say dollar a plus dollar b this is how you add numbers once you let me just take these spaces this space side there's no space okay. no. there's no space okay. now also and one more thing so usually this is how you mention it right i go with let's say remove the dollar you go with dollar a plus dollar b now give some message add Add of uh, numbers, okay. Addition of numbers, let's say. What is addition of numbers is dollar a plus dollar b. This is how you do it. So instead of going with dollar a plus dollar b, we can also follow one more kind of uh, syntax. You just mentioned the dollar in the beginning of it. Okay. If you mention the dollar at the beginning within braces then so sorry variables right variable name is capital a capital a plus capital b these are case sensitive remember that okay fine dollar a plus dollar b now usually you mention that dollar a plus dollar b but i have mentioned here so dollar a and then so dollar within the curly within the curly braces mention that a plus b that means dollar will be applicable for so all the values within those bases okay so that, that is the meaning of it and then going just say remove subtraction subtraction of numbers so a minus b as usual just minus b I also go with let's say multiplication of numbers which is dollar and curly braces let's say variable a and then star b okay then echo and then let's say division of numbers what is that dollar 
and A, percentile, and then B. Okay, right. So, see. And then also we go with reminder. See, division means, sorry, slash. Okay, and then go with reminder as well. I like to print some reminder as well. Okay, so reminder of numbers. A percentile B. Yes, this is how you print reminder. Reminder will be printed with the help of percentile. Okay. Fine. So next, so save it and then SH and let's click 8. And then, so value of A is 10, B is 2. Fine. And so first is addition, addition is 12. And subtraction is 8, multiplication is 20, and division is of course 5. Reminder is 0 reminder. Okay, right. so does it work for even negative values? Suppose it works for negative and then so let's say minus 10, and then 2. Yeah. Right. So it also works successfully for negative numbers. And does it work for zero? Yes. Right. So it's works working successfully for all the numbers. Anyway, it's very, very simple. Okay. But see, I don't have any script. Usually, if I don't have any script, how do you add numbers? For example, this is my command line. Is there any command to add numbers? Yes, there is a command. What is the command is? So if you want to add, if you want to do any kind of, uh, so these arithmetic operations through the command line. So what is the command? The command is PXPR expression, right? So expression of one plus two. Now, but you see that there is a space. After EXPR, so you must give some space there. Okay, space and then two space minus space three. So EXPR is a command. Okay, so let's do one thing. We just try to Instead of these multiplications, I go with expression. Okay, so I just remove everything. Let's try to do one more step. So these are just commands. You can just go with let's say echo and let's say enter value of a. So instead of going with so those uh, a plus b, I'm going with straight away expression. Okay, now read it. A and then echo, and let's say enter value of B. And then read hyphen R, let's say B. And then what I'm going to print echo and simply just say reverse quotation expression, right? Expression of what dollar a i'm sorry okay it's expression of dollar a space plus dollar b okay. so it is just like a command right so just one to the expression we go reverse quotation expression and what is that? Dollar A space minus space dollar B. I like to try for other alternative operations. So, but they must be in reverse quotation because there is a command. I think we know that, right? So, dollar A. And then, so 
then star let us say dollar p okay let's try this thing first but just look at there the third one we have a syntax error okay so while there is a syntax error see multiplication has to be done so not with star so in this if you use expression command so how this has to be done slash star okay so if you like to do multiplication with so expression as a command you make sure that you just go with slash and then star and then save it now run that again see that now this is multiplied successfully okay so that's a different meaning for star so the star has to be mentioned that means multiplication has to be done for the top so backward slash and then so star okay yeah so and you can try for the star then you like to go with the so i have tried for multiplication addition and then subtraction you can try this okay so what are you going to try you just want to uh, um what is it uh, subtraction subtraction is tried this type of reminder and then division okay but for reminder division same thing like you can go with backslash and then person okay okay so these are some arithmetic operations now let's move on to some logical comparison operators okay we just need to compare it now okay let's try with this comparisons i think we know what is comparison means right so relation means comparisons right so is it less than or is it greater than i want to compare them okay so let's do compare it so we have three comparisons anyway so less than greater than equals to right so let's try it So let's go with. Okay. So first, we go. Let's say. So enter. So a. Okay, enter value of a in, and then read that input. then enter b and then read it i can now so let's try now go with so compare now how are you going to compare using test okay so test will help us in testing it that means doing comparisons now so what do you want to test i want to test whether so is a is less than b or not right so it's a very uh, similar syntax when uh, syntax is only for testing okay so we don't have any kind of uh, special say so we know is that dollar a and then dollar p and in between you just use that hyphen lt 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 stands for less than okay and then you want to print the result how do you print the result using dollar question mark okay right so very very uh, simple things now let's try with that now so is dollar a i'm taking all upper cases that means capital letters because variables are case sensitive i can lt lt stands for less than and then dollar b so we are comparing it okay fine and the statement is done that's why semicolon and then i go with echo 
this one so we go and then uh, print that value so how do you print the result of the value i go with the question mark okay for dollar question mark this dollar question mark will print the value result of the value i mean okay and then test and then go with dollar a is greater than hyphen gp gp stands for greater than dollar b and then so print the result with so double quotations and then dollar question mark then again test it with dollar a hyphen equals to we have eq hyphen eq is both hyphen eq right so we are comparing also is it equals to or not dollar b then echo let's say dollar question mark test now we are going to compare it is it equals to is it less than or equals to it's lq so lq stands for less than or equals to sorry le i'm sorry le so le stands for less than or equals to okay fine dollar b and then again print the result dollar question mark but all these ones make sure you have semi points at the end also like to test it dollar a i find greater than or equals to and and then dollar b so and then let's say dollar and then question mark right so now we going to run the script and then first enter value of a the value of a is 2 value of b is 3 okay and you want to check this with the again the resist okay first is is it a less than b now what is the value of a to value of b is value of b is 3 is a less than b yes that's correct then what is the result is 0 okay since the result is 0 that means a is less than b now that is correct okay so we are compared that less than next is it greater than no it's not greater than okay so a is not greater than b so it is incorrect incorrect means it is false so one and next is is it equals to definitely not two is not equal to three okay and then next is it less than or equals to yes it is less than or equals to that is correct two is less than or equals to three and finally is it is two greater than or equals to no it's not but so this is how we just do and that is yeah so this is there is something related to some relational operators and say so relation means we just go with some uh, comparisons is it less than greater than or whatever so very uh, so simple things now so let's go on to logical operators right we'll just try this logical operators but while we try this logical operators so what are we going to do now we gone with the relation let's start with logical okay. i think you must understand what is that logical means okay. so i want to perform multiple operations i want to perform multiple operations that means i want to run two things in a single command that means using and uh, and we have so if you want to run two things, let's say I want to compare, I have three numbers, A, B, C. I want to compare that E, C is greater than B and E, C is greater than C. Then you can use and. 
So that is N. And then we have R. And you want to compare any one of them. Think of it. And these are the two logical operations we have. And R. Now, we're going to look into, look into an example regarding logical operation, operations. But in the meanwhile, in the same script, now I'm going to try some loops. So what is loops means? Looping concept. Looping is nothing but I'm going to run some operation within that loop continuously. Now if there is a task, I want to perform the task about 10 times. Right? Yes, that is what we call looping. So whenever you go with looping, so and you're going to loop that operation, you want to perform that about 10 times or 20 times, number of times. You want to repeat it. And whenever you want to go with repeating it, now you go with loop it. Loop that logic. Yes, one. If I loop it, then I'm going to do comparison result. I mean I'm going to perform that operation multiple number of times. Okay. Now let's start with a loop and which is if loop. Let's start with if. So the syntax of if loop is syntax is if and then mention that condition. That means if this condition is satisfied. Okay, and then so you do something okay so you want to do what else you want to do right and then close that if yeah this is the syntax if and then condition that means if the condition is true and then so what do you want to do i want to print some values okay then you can print it and then we just close that if statement yeah, so very very basic syntax. Now let's try with this. Okay, so try this if statement now. And but while we try this if statement, we also look into some logical operations. I'm going to look into some logical operations. But we're going to try this together. And same time, we're going to use some relational operations as well, like we have seen so far. What are those relational operations? We have seen that. So less than and then greater than and then equals to and we have less than equals to also we have greater than equals to right let's perform these operations so we're going to try relational logical and then if statement all of them in one single script okay so let's try that now so that is my script is regarding. So now we are looking into logical operations. Okay, clear. Yeah. Let's try that now. So okay. So now what is my script will be regarding? Now we're going to ask user enter marks of three different subjects. We are subject A subject b and then subject c and we're going to give some result to the user if the user gets above so 35 in all three subjects the user is passed okay 35 are greater than i mean but that is what is the condition so now what is the condition is so user must get more than 35 okay is greater than or equals to 35. That is a condition. Okay. In all three subjects, there is a condition. Okay. Well, let's try that. And if the condition is satisfied and give a result, give a message to the user, you have successfully passed your exam. Okay. Fine. Let's see. First, let's say go and sorry, enter marks of subject A. 
okay and then let's say read it hyphen r then i'm going to store that value in a variable echo enter marks of subset b then store that in a variable which is b variable and then say enter marks of subject c right and again i'm storing that in a variable which is c okay so we have we first we're going to ask user to enter the values of these three subjects next so let's compare it so what are you going to compare it we're going to uh, compare that now first subject a. okay to get that okay and then condition so what is that condition is so user must get marks more than 35 right now but you need to take you need to test it right just like we have seen uh, in that so logical operations so relational operations right how did you test it so what is the syntax the syntax was test and then hyphen greater than this is the syntax or less than the same thing i'm going to use test if test is greater than r equals to let's say 35 greater than r equals to 35 but what do you want to test it i want test marks of dollar a isn't it yes okay and then so i'm following the uh, syntax of if statement if the condition then so print give a message to the user echo so you have passed okay fine and then so what's next close if statement close that if statement okay so i'm just testing for only a not for b and c not for b and c save it right now run that script So, enter the marks of A. Yeah. I just mentioned, let's say, 50. Oh, okay, fine. We have these three as well, right? Okay, let's do one thing. Okay, let's also go with, I'm sorry, just close it. Okay, so just a second. I just make them uh, as comments, okay? So this is how you comment it. Save it. Okay, I don't need them, right? No. Search and then script. So let's say enter 50. So you have passed. Okay. Now let, let's again run it. So let's say 35 as well. Now, but what if you enter? Let's say below 35. Let's say I just enter that nothing. But I should print a message to the user as well, right? So saying that uh, you have failed as well. But I'll, I'll just display that later. Okay, I'll display that later. Right? But as of now, it's working successfully. Let's try with. Now we're going to ask user to enter marks of subject B and then read it. Marks of subject C and then read it. Right now, and so, but user must pass all the all the subjects. So in order to clear that, so he has to pass all the subjects. Nothing but so he has to pass subject A as well as subject B 
and C. Now, since we are using and conditions, now for with in between hyphen A. Now, A stands for and. So, what is the other condition? Other condition is dollar P hyphen and then so let's say greater than or equals to 35. So, in order to pass the exam, we must clear all the subjects, and that's why I'm going with and condition. And so, let's say what is that? Hyphen, sorry, dollar C, sorry, dollar C, hyphen, greater than or equals to 35. If we clear, if he gets more than 35 in all three subjects, then so he's going to clear the exam. Okay, let's do it. Save it. So marks of subject A, let's say 50, and subject B, 60, subject C, 7. So we have passed. So these three subjects. Now he has cleared it. Exactly. Okay. Now next. So but what if we enter below 16? Below 35. Okay. Let's enter below 35. So 34 in subject A. But rest of them are above 35. No, nothing. He has not cleared it. But I want to print a message to the user as well that he has not cleared it. So what you can do, we can try with another if loop. Just try with another if loop that you can try that from your side. Okay. So what you're going to do, you just try to write one more if statement here. Another if loop, if loop if statement saying that. So if it is less than or equals to, or say less than 35. Okay, and then give him a message that so it is. I mean, the uh, user has failed the exam. Just do that. Okay, that's your task. You just try that. Now, but I'm going to write uh, one more if statement, and this is regarding let's say test dollar a if user is getting more than. 75 are equals to okay in all three subjects or let's say any one of the subject this time so previously i just mentioned that in all three subjects okay but now i just mentioned that all any one of the subject right now what is any one of the subject means r condition go with r and then dollar b and greater than or equals to 75 r o stands for r okay that's o and then so try that dollar c and then it is also greater than or equals to so let's say 75 so we are going going with r condition Right, going with R. Then echo. Let's say so. Let's display some message. Let's say distinction. Okay, and then close it. If statement. Okay, close it. Now, so. First enter subjects of A. I enter all subjects above 75, 80, and then 90, let's say 98. Yes. Your first exam and plus it is distinction. Okay, you see that we have two messages. That means two if statements are executing successfully. And going with 
to run that same script. Now, so this time I'm going to enter subjects, okay, marks of the subjects. So above 75, but not all the subjects, any one of the subjects. Now subject one is 80, and rest of them are below 75, let's say 60 and then 50. Still, it is distinction, right? So he got sub, he got distinction, he got above 75 in subject A, and then still there is distinction. Why? Because it is our condition. Yeah, that's our condition. But let's change that condition. So I'm going to display so distinction meshes to the user. If he gets above 75 in all subjects, in all subjects, that means instead of using our condition, I just say iPhone A. A means and and condition. Go with and. Right? So now this time, user must get above 75 in all three subjects. Okay, so. Go with 80 and then so 90 and then 98. Yes, user has passed the distinction, but what if so user gets so below 75 in one subject and rest of them are above 75. See, so he has passed it, but did he get a distinction? No, there, there was no distinction okay, because the condition was what was the condition? It was an condition, right? So previously I used a condition called or condition, but now I used an condition. Okay. So that is what is how an um, or condition works. So these are so. Now, in this example, we have used all these three things together. That means, so we have used relational, logical, and then if statement. Now, so just try this scenario from your side. That is a scenario I just have when you try that scenario. Okay. So, so the scenario was. So let's try that in if statement using if. Okay. So we we'll try that. So comparisons. Try comparisons. Right. So now what are the comparisons means? A subject A, B, and then C. Right. And try this three. Uh, what are you going to try first? He has passed it or not for passing. So what is the condition is user must get must get above uh, 35 or equals to can say 35 or equals to. And secondly, try for distinction. Okay. So in order to get this, he has to get get the or equals to let's say 75. And also check for fail condition. And if user fails, so give a message to the user. So it is, so if that is less than 35, if it is less than 35, and display message to the user, that user has failed it. So I want to display all these three messages to the users using if conditions. So we need to use if condition plus relational operators as well as logical operators. Okay, just try that. Right? So now, tomorrow we're going to look into so so same using if statements, but we'll be using loop if loop conditions. Now in this example, you must write three if loop if statements, right? But instead of writing three if statements, can we write can we simplify that script? Yes, we can do it using if else. And we have more loops, we have for loop, so if loop, and then once we have while loop, we'll be looking at those loops in tomorrow's session. So, any questions?
ఓకే